This to me is a giant national security issue. We need plenty of security, but you don't do it this way. My name is David Schechter. I'm a veteran reporter, and now I work for you. I'm taking real people out on the road to get their questions answered, and you're coming along for the ride. This is Verify Road Trip. The United States and Mexico share a border that's 2,000 miles long, but only one third of it is covered by a wall, costing $2.4 billion. Presidential candidate Donald Trump wants to finish that wall. What an impenetrable, physical, tall, powerful, beautiful southern border wall. We wanted to know how well the wall we have works. And because you hear a lot about the big bad liberal media, we're taking along someone who will likely vote for Trump so he can see it for himself. He is Nick Mustine businessman, father, and small town city councilman. Nick likes the idea of the wall. Here we are. What do you want to know? I can't wait to see the wall. It's, you know, you hear about it your entire life about the border. What's going on? The fear, the paranoia, the hype. I want to see this thing. I want to touch it. That's Robert Cameron with Texas Border Tours. He's taking us on an ATV ride along the wall. And there it is, the border wall. Seeing it up close, immediately, Nick has a question. Why is there a hole? <laughs> What's the hole here, and that hole, and that hole, and in, in We the saw wall? them all over the place. What? We found permanent gaps in the wall big enough to drive a truck through. Here's what we learned. By treaty, neither the US nor Mexico can build in the floodplain of the Rio Grande. So in spots, the wall can be up to a half mile north of the river. That far north, the wall frequently cuts through private property and farms. And while the government can take your land for a wall, they can't take away access to your property. Well, these uh, gaps on the, or breaks on the wall uh, allow farmers to bring their equipment in to till this land. Does this make sense to you? No, I mean, before this wall was here, just imagine nothing open. So people you can cross go wherever you want. Wherever now you can only cross right here. You can here. only cross here now. And in many cases, that is what's happening. The gaps funnel migrants into predictable places, making it easier for Border Patrol to round them up. You don't need a ladder. You don't need a ladder. You just need legs. To I walk can't even there. knock. Hey, can I come in? Do we need a bigger border wall? Absolutely, 100%. And no. it needs to, this is 20 feet, it needs to be 40, 50 feet higher. When you're a stone's throw away from Mexico, you start to see things differently. What are your observations here? What have you seen? What are you thinking? We could do a lot more. Doesn't matter what political affiliation you're with, we could do a lot more. Over in McAllen, we met Republican Party Chair Sergio Sanchez at the Sacred Heart Catholic Church. In 2014, the church struggled to care for a surge of unaccompanied minors from Central America. Would a bigger wall, wider, taller, stronger, keep them out? Bill, it's more than a wall. The only thing that will stop people are people. Sanchez wants funding for more agents on the ground and patrol boats in the Rio Grande. A continuous wall, in my opinion, is an emotional response to a very real problem that needs a solution. And Nick is coming to realize the border holds more surprises than he expected. We're talking to Tomas de Leon. He manages a water district on the river. What's the craziest thing you've, that's happened to you out here on this, this stretch? We've been shot right here next to our pumps. Been shot? Uh, yeah, twice. Shot at, but not hit. Tomas thinks he got too close to drugs that were caught up in a grate. You think they were trying to kill you? Well, uh, maybe. Then Tomas pointed out a man in a tree on the Mexico side who was staring back at us. Like, oh, this one? Yeah. Uh, you see that guy out there? Yeah. There were two. Wow, that's that, you only read about that. That is wild. Maybe he's getting ready to cross some people or some bundles. 
So we could be standing here in the middle of a drug deal. Yeah. Yeah. That's always comforting. <laughs> <laughs> Early the next morning, we're an hour east in the southmost neighborhood of Brownsville, where a two-lane road cuts through the border fence. Tony Zavaleta is a former Democratic official and a vocal opponent of the wall. Do we need bigger, better wall? No, we don't need any wall. We need people. We need technology. We need boots on the ground. What would happen if you closed these gaps? You would literally cut off this community, this half of the southmost community there and half there, their elementary schools and middle schools right down the road. People wouldn't be able to get there. They'd have to go all the way around. So wait, so, we're, so we've built a wall and there's a school right back there. Yeah, a couple. There's a school on one side of the wall. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. on this side Absolutely of the wall. No yeah, they're right, no, it doesn't make any sense at all. Right around the corner from here is Pamela Taylor and her sign. The placement of the border fence isolates her home on the south side of the wall. And she's had some surprise visitors. I have an illegal sitting in that rocking chair there. You had a person sitting in your I chair? I had that person sitting in. A surprise addition. I've had a baby born on my patio in front of my bedroom. And a surprise find. 40 kilos of marijuana. 40 kilos of marijuana was on your property? Yes. Since the wall was built, she's continued to see a steady stream of immigrants crossing her property. Pamela even leaves cold water out so they'll stop coming to her door. You would like the wall just gone completely? It's not doing any good. Our final stop is back in McAllen. There's a vibrant shopping district here and some tasty treats. The majority of the shoppers are Mexican citizens who come here legally. Shiresh Maganzini is the perfume king. You are the king. Thank you. This guy's the king. <laughs> The local Chamber of Commerce says Mexican customers spend $1.2 billion in McAllen every year. Shiresh says the wall, even discussions about the wall, make his Mexican customers feel unwelcome. So when the wall went up in 2007, what did that do to you? Well, it slowed down the traffic. But what, do you have a kind of an idea? Of I dropped in sales almost 60%. Okay, Nick's heard a lot, seen a lot. Let's wrap it up. The wall we have today, do you feel that wall is working? No. No, I, from what I've seen, no, I don't. So, we did verify. The wall we have now does not work the way most people think it does. Many people down here across party lines think the wall doesn't work at all. So, to Nick's question, do we need a bigger, badder border wall? I guess in all honesty, we do. Only one person said more wall, everyone else said more boots on the ground but you still say more wall. I think a lot of us as Americans would feel better knowing that those gaps are closed. And, but then you trap the school on the other side of the wall, you trap her on the other side of the wall, and see, you got I, farmers who can't get to their fields. So how can you close those gaps? That, that's a big problem to work around, but it's a workable problem. So while many people down here see the flaws in the wall we already have and think the wall is not the answer, that's not what Nick concluded. He thinks the cost and effort to finish the wall is still worth it. But don't take my word for it. Take his. <laughs>